welcome to 786.1 Radio Ru'ah, me and Mola's super fantastic Mahi Ramadan radio show, where we take you on the magnificent journey of the heart through Dua Iftita, all thanks to Allah and our awaited Savior, Imam Mahdi. Ajil Farajahum. I had a lovely time with the two teeth pink and bang twist yesterday. How did you all get along? Listeners out there, keep sending those answers in. I'm really enjoying unpacking dua ta like this. I've begun to write a few notes in the margins of my dua book, and it's really helping me bring my heart into the recitation. I've also begun a little dua ta journal, a little book that I keep adding to throughout the day. Yesterday, I made a continuous praise doodle page for myself and keep adding doodles and notes of all the amazing things Allah does that sometimes we don't realize. Wow, that's an amazing idea, Nadia. It sure helps to take a little time to ponder and pen it down. Dua iftita is definitely getting us more aware of Allah and therefore closer to Him. Hey, Radia, how did you get on with that tongue twister? Incredible invitation, invitation incredible. <laughs> Still working on it. We're all striving incredibly for the invitation. Yes, that's the one. Allah's invitation is definitely not a tongue twister. Yes, absolutely. Moving along, we have another super fun, jam-packed day today, plowing through Dua Iftita and harvesting its treasures. Let's begin with some inspiration from one of our tracks. The blessings of our Rahman are a true wonder. They come before you know. They come before you ask. They come before you think. Pouring down in millions and gazillions. Thank you, thank you, thank you, our Rahman. Look around and see. You are guided to be the best you can be. Iman and beautiful deeds in his proximity. Closer and closer we strive, living a thankful life. Joy for you and me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ar-Rahman. The blessings of Ar-Rahman make us stronger and stronger baraka upon baraka they go deep within they fuel your golden heart they spread all around side to side to all the nations thank you thank you thank you ar-rahman ar-rahman the super super always kind and merciful Surah Rahman 55.1 Tabarakasmu Rabbika Dhil Jalali Wal Ikram Blessed be the name of your Lord, the Lord of glory and honor. Surah Rahman 55.78 Thank you, Nabiha. The words match so perfectly with the verses from Dua Iftita we're looking at today. Let's begin by listening to the Arabic and English in chunks. I am super sure, certain that you are the most merciful of the merciful when it comes to matters and affairs of forgiveness and mercy. I am super sure, certain that you are the most powerful in response when it comes to matters of taking people to account and punishment. And I am super sure, 
Certainly when it comes to the matter of greatness and power, then you are the most magnificent in these matters and affairs. The reason we add that I'm super sure certain at the beginning of each line is because they all start with were, which means and. These are phrases that are connected to the first verse. That's why they all have the super sure certain. So I guess what we are saying is that we are super sure about what the rest of each verse is saying. Absolutely! But let's take a look at what super sure means. Sometimes we can be unsure, or a little sure, or sure, or super sure. It's a bit like when you've forgotten your phone, so we can't use Google Maps when we need to get somewhere. If it's a place you know without Google Maps... Head northeast on northeast 30th place, then turn right to stay on northeast 30th place. You are super sure of the way, but if it's a new place, we always end up guessing. Oh, like last time we went to the art gallery and we went round in circles. Oh yeah, when we got there, we just about got in. You remember that, you guys? <laughs> so going back to the variations in being sure, in Arabic, when you have doubt, it's like you are unsure. You're not even 50% sure, like less than 50% sure. That's called wahabi. Then we have kinda sure, like 50-50. That's called shak. Like shak yatenamaz, 50-50. Yeah, absolutely. Then we have quite sure, like 51 to 99%. That's called dhan. And absolutely sure is called... Yakin! Yeah! Super sure! No doubts, no questions. Even if someone says something otherwise, we're still super, super sure. So in the dua, our Mola Jan is super sure about all the qualities Allah is. Absolutely! We want to ask ourselves if we are super sure or have yakin in all of these qualities of Allah too and strive to be super duper sure. Let's list them out. I'm going to write them in my Dua Iftitaar journal. That's a good idea. So we got how merciful or super kind Allah is in His forgiveness and mercy. This first line really makes me feel so blessed to have a Lord who gives and gives and gives and is so merciful, so kind. And we are super sure of it. I've got the goosebumps thinking about how enveloped we are in Allah's Rahmah. I love the feeling in the heart, the thinking of Allah and, and His so much mercy. Next on the list, the verses remind us to be on the Sirat al mustaqim Miss the whoopsies and those who choose the wrong way will surely be taken into account and punished. Yes. وَأَشَدُّ الْمُعَاقِبِينَ فِي مَوْزِئِ النَّقَالِ وَالنَّقِمَةِ I am super sure, certain, that you are the most powerful in response when it comes to matters of taking people to account and punishment. And here are the kind of synonyms that Mullah Jan mentions again. They're not quite the same meaning, but adds to our understanding of the outcome of disobeying Allah. Mullah Jan has such a powerful way with his words. Nakal and Nakema. Nakal is like a specific type of punishment and Nakema is like punishment based on actions that affect society. Now that reminds me of Surah Yasin. Oh yeah, totally Radia. We've got Mr. A Sparkles, the storyteller in the studio, to share today's story. Hi guys, it's a story time! From Ayah 13 to 27 of Surah Yasin shares a story of a people from Antakya, which is in Turkey. It was ruled by a Mr. Whoopsie King. It was a wealthy city. Allah sent guides there out of his mercy. One was called Yalis and one was called Barnabas. When they got to the outskirts of the city, they met an old shepherd who asked who they were. They said they were guides sent to guide them. The old shepherd asked for proof. 
they sent they could cure the sick and heal the blind. The old shepherd said he had a son who was ill. He asked if they could cure him. They said yes, and with the power they got from Allah, they cured the boy. The old shepherd embraced the religion of Allah. The king of Antakya was a big Mr. Whoopsie King. He was a stubborn Mr. Whoopsie King. He was cross and put Super Guide Yalis and Super Guide Barnabas in prison. Another Super Guide was sent, Super Guide Shamun. He became friends with the Mr. Whoopsie King. Then one day he asked the king if they could bring the two who were in prison for questions. They said they only wanted to guide the people when asked. They said they could cure the sick and heal the blind. A blind man was brought and he was cured. The king became a Mr. Guided King. Ayah 20 to 25 talks about a wonderful man. He lived in the same town as the Mr. Whoopsie King. He is none other than Mr. H. Sparkles. His real name is Habib Najjar. He was a simple man with a super mission. Allah loved him so much. His story is mentioned in the Holy Quran. He told the Mr. Whoopsies in his town to follow the guides. They wanted nothing except to guide them. Ayah 22 talks about how sure he is of coming from Allah and returning to Him. He chooses to worship Allah out of His conviction. That's the super sure we were talking about. Yes, he knew nothing can help him except Allah. No idols can do anything for him. Ayah 24 and 25 talks about how he tells the people Worshipping idols is wrong. He tries with lots of love and pure heart to convince his people to believe in Allah. They have no yakin, that's why they don't listen. Yes, Ayah 26 says, It is said to him, Enter the garden. He said, Would that my people knew? When Mr. H. Sparkles, Habib Najjar, enters the garden of paradise, he remembers his people. What a wonderful life he has come to. They too could have enjoyed all of this. Ayah 27 talks about the two super fantastic things that really help him. Constant asking of forgiveness and working on his taqwa level. That's a perfect example of everything in these first verses of Dua Ta. Mr. H. Sparkles, Habib Najjar's advice that helped him, are always asking for forgiveness. And we say, <laughs> Then we said how we are super sure, certain that you are the most powerful in response when it comes to matters of taking people to account and punishment. The Mr. Whoopsies got the punishment that they deserved because when Mr. H. Sparkles got to the heavens, he again wished his people had listened. And finally on the list is... <laughs> And I am super sure, certain, when it comes to the matter of greatness and power, then you are the most magnificent in these matters and affairs. You can make a page in your Dua Ibtata journal where you write or draw all the things that display Allah's greatness and power. The sun is so mighty and great. It is like one massive light bulb that brightens and warms the whole earth. Now that's Kibri'a'i wal Azma. Good idea, Radia. High five! The first stanza of Dua Iftita has got us journeying from Turkey all the way to the sun. They are really powerful words in Mullah Mahdi Jan's Dua. I wonder what 
Mr. H. Sparkle was referring to when he said, It was said, Enter paradise, he said. I wish my people knew. Let's do a really cool eye up for our GPS Jenna segment. GPS Jenna. Allah says in Surah Waqiyah, Fi Jannatin Naim, in the gardens of pleasure. Fi Jannatin Naim. Naim in the Arabic Quranic Dictionary translates blessings, grace, good living, enjoy life, and to flourish. But this good living and blessing is constant, constant, constant. Meaning it never stops, like if you went to a soft serve ice cream machine and you get a cup and begin to put in ice cream and it never ends. It goes on and on and on. Wow, yum. Mm. Who wants ice cream? It's Mama Ramadan. Mmm, for it, Iftar. Me. Me. Remember to draw this unending garden of pleasure in your sketchbook, dear listeners. My felt pens remind me of our simple little Laran. Nabiha, do you have that to play for our listeners today? I wanna be the colors of Allah. I wanna be the colors of Allah. Splish, splash, drizzle and splat. Splish, splash, drizzle and splat. I wanna be the colors of Allah. Sibrat Allahi. Woman Ahsanu. Min Allahi Sibratan We see the colors of Allah and there's no one better than Him. Here's today's tongue twister, everyone. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. You try. about we do some fun iftar cooking today to match the continuous blessing of Jannat in Naim. That sounds like a brilliant idea. Do you have a recipe in mind? Of course I do. Let's see if Raja can guess. It's one of your favorite foods. Remember, it's got to remind you of the constant unending blessings of Jannah. And it's not soft serve machine ice cream. This is fun. <laughs> I sometimes come in a bag, but I'm not new clothes from a store. I sometimes come in a bucket, but I'm not fried chicken. I get bigger and bigger and bigger when I'm heated, but I'm not bread dough. I can be salted, but I'm not a french fry. I can be buttered, but I'm not a pancake. What am I? Popcorn! High five! Spot on, Radia! Popcorn really reminds me of the constant, unending blessings of Jannah. Here's the recipe for you. Make sure you get a parent to help out with this activity. You put a few kernels of corn into a pot with a little oil in it. Put a lid on it and after a while, you'll hear the unending popping going on. Once the popping stops, turn the cooker off and wait for a bit and then open the pot. Aha! A pot that was almost empty is now full of popcorn. And remember to wait till iftar time to enjoy your popcorn. Be sure to share. That's what gets you there. Jannatin Naim, here we come. I'm going to make popcorn today. Popcorn, popcorn, popping everywhere. Popping, popping, growing more and more. Yummy popcorn, butter and salted or sweet, sweet caramel. Popcorn, popcorn, popping everywhere. We have just enough time to do our meditation minute. How about we focus on this constant, unending happy place? The meditation. 
meditation minute. Close your eyes, be very still, lying down, and imagine you're sitting on the most comfortable couch under a tall twinkling tree in Jannah. You can hear the wind blow gently. Now very gently you relax and speak to each part of your body. Start with your feet. Let your toes relax completely. Let them remember Allah and how super sure we are of His mercy. Now tighten your leg muscles and let them go. Feel all the tension released in your legs. Now squeeze the muscles in your tummy. Let tummy remember how super sure it is of Allah's mercy. Now stretch your back as far as you can and relax. Squeeze your arms and fingers into a tight fist. And now slowly uncurl them and let them rest. Let your arms remember how merciful Allah is with all that it does and can do. Let your thoughts relax, relax your eyes, relax your mouth and your cheeks. Be completely relaxed under the twinkling tree in Jannah. Feel the mercy of Allah surround you completely. Stay there for a few more moments. Enjoying your Jannatin Naim. And now, when you're ready, wiggle and wriggle your fingers and your toes. Have a big stretch and open your eyes and say, I am surrounded and I'm super sure of Allah's magnificent mercy. That was amazing! In our imaginations, Jannah is so peaceful and full of constant, unending blessings. I can't wait to get to the one Allah has promised in the Holy Quran. Yeah, betcha! Jannah is a wonderful place, filled with glory and grace. Quran is our guide to get us there. Jannah is a wonderful place. I wanna go there. Jannah is a wonderful place, filled with glory and grace. I wanna see Rasul Allah's face. Jannah is a wonderful place. I wanna go there. That's all we've got time for. Nadia, what's today's two T think and thank twist? Two T think and thank twist. What's a choice you have made in your life that has made you closer to Allah? Now that's something to think about. Thank you, Nadia. See you all tomorrow on 786.1 Radio Ru'ah.